2 Kings chapter 4. Everybody found it? Say amen. This comes after 1 Kings, then it's 2 Kings, and I'm on the fourth chapter. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to begin reading at the 8th verse. Everybody found it? And it fell on a day that Elisha passed by to Shunem, where was a great woman, a noble woman. And she, was, she constrained him to eat bread. She allured him into her house so that it was as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat her bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. Let us make a chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him a there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for you? Wouldest thou be spoken for me to the king? Would you want me to speak to the king for you or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. I don't need anything. Verse 14. And he said, What then is it to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, Thou shalt embrace a son. And, he shed, and she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaiden. And the woman conceived and bare a son. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the anointing. Oh, Lord, this is what we've been teaching, praying, seeking, longing to be able to not just have church that goes through the motions, but that we would be able to come into your presence. Oh, Father, I pray that you would anoint our ears now, God. Help us not to be worried about the time. I just pray, God, maybe I should pray that prayer over myself. Help me, God, not to be worried about the time. Let your word be spoken and let it accomplish what it is meant to accomplish. You speak to your people today, I pray, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We have often heard of the Old Testament story of this nameless woman who's only referred to as the Shunammite woman. We read in the Bible of her foresight, her faith, and her reward, but we often overlook a, a minor but kind of prominent figure in the story, her husband. Today we will call him the Shunammite man, the visiting preacher. After all, without this man, the story is incomplete. Even though the lenses of the camera are not focused on him or his activity, the fact is without him, the story would have been a non-starter. Without him, the passage of Scripture would have been totally different, or maybe it would have been omitted from Scripture altogether. So can I speak to the people this morning who are supporting cast members? Let me address those who are in the story but are often overlooked and undervalued. Those who are so minor that the preacher seldom focus on the role that you play in the production. This story that God is writing in our church, in our community, in our society cannot be written without you. You may only be a supporting actor, but you support everything. And without you in the story, it all comes crumbling down to the ground. Never underestimate the value you of your input into the story no matter how small the role no matter how insignificant you feel no matter how far down on the credits your name appears you need to know that we cannot do this production without you amen somebody amen. don't use up all your worship and worship now come on now stay with me you're important to the rest of the story our text today begins at the end of a long famine in the land the times have been desperate. The people have been tested. When this Shunammite woman began to notice the prophet, Elisha, who often passes by her house, and there was something different about this man, the way he carried himself, the, the way he just, uh, there was the way he acted, the, the, his his ambiance, there was something, there was hope in him, there was power in him, there was purpose in him, and she knew in her heart this man was a man 
that had been with God. This Shunammite woman is said to be a notable woman. She was a good reputation, a great woman with great character. But remember, in the time frame of this writing, she was still just a woman. She lived during a time when women were often regarded as inferior. But there was something in her spirit that God, that saw God in this prophet that passed by her house. She didn't let others' perceptions of her hinder her desire for the Spirit of God. She didn't let the culture of the day persuade her to take a back seat. I better stop and preach for about 30 seconds before I continue on in this message because some of you have been persuaded by the voices of the day. Some of you are being lied to by the culture of the day. Don't you be persuaded that God is dead. Don't you be persuaded that the gifts no longer operate. Don't you be persuaded that there's many ways to get to the Father. There is still but one way unless Jesus draws a man. We are of all men most miserable. Don't be persuaded by the circumstances of our society. Don't you let culture tell you to take a back seat. Look at verse 9. She tells her husband, look now, I know that this man is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. It's interesting that the Bible does not say that she was drawn to his teachings. She was not drawn to the miracles he produced. She was simply drawn by the spirit that rested on him as he passed by. On a side note, you don't have to have a pulpit and a Bible for people to see Jesus in you. You don't have to have an eloquent speaker and a dynamic personality type for people to see Jesus in you. What you need to be is so full of Jesus that those around you only see the Jesus that is in you. Let us not try to hide who we are. Let them see Jesus. Get so full of Jesus. That's all they see. Ask Eric Wilbank about his testimony this week. A lady said, oh, Eric, and you know Eric ain't a man of a lot of words. He, he doesn't carry a Bible and hand out tracts. He doesn't, but you know what she said? I can see the light of God coming from, from you. You know why? Because you get into a place with Jesus and all of a sudden people begin to notice the Jesus in you. Not by the words you say, but by the presence of God that's in your life. Ah, uh, let them see Jesus. There's hope in you for a hopeless world. There's joy in you for a world full of sadness. There's peace in you for a world in chaos. There's love in you for a world full of hatred. It's not just the pastor of a local church who has the power. It's in you too. You, the one who feels hopeless and helpless. Oh, you can make a difference. You, the one that feels unimportant, unlearned, un unstable, and unable. Just get so full of Jesus that people sense him as you walk into a room 2022 is has something very common with the story of the Shunammite woman we're in a time of desperation the people have been through a famine they're trying to get back on their feet they're trying to get reestablished they're trying to get back on track we're living in a world where we're at the beginning of a famine Gas is at an all-time high. There's a food shortage and abundance of inflation. There's wars and rumors of wars all around us. Our kids are not safe even in their schoolhouses anymore. Or as congregations are not safe in their church houses. And the laws of the land are no longer being enforced, which seems to lead to even more crime activity. Church, we're in desperate times. People are cold and people are indifferent. People are afraid. We're living in hopeless times, but yet not without hope. We are the children of God and his presence is with us. His joy is full and his peace passes our comprehension. He is still Jireh, providing all of our needs. He's still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. He is still with us and for us. He's still giving us the victory. I have still not seen the righteous nor his seed out begging for bread. He is still God even in our crazy times. And you need to know that the world that we're living in, they need the power of God that is in you. The thing we need to realize is that the people around us are being full of desperation, but we can walk in the room and they become full of his spirit because they're needing the hope that is within us. Oh, this Shunammite woman can sense there's something about Elisha. And she decides to try to attract him to her house. <laughs> 
I want the presence of God in my house, she said. I, I got to have this spirit in my house. There's something about this man that can calm my chaos. I need what he has. And she begins to bake the best smelling pies and sitting them in the window and fanning the flames. Uh, she began to send some incense in, into Elisha's way. And he, he'd walk by and she had fanned that fragrance over toward his direction. And the aroma of her cooking finally allured him to come and dine with the woman and her husband my question to you this morning are you doing anything to allure the spirit to come to your house have you offered any kind of incense in worship that allures him off the street and into your house or does he keep on walking by going to wherever he was going but there was something about the fragrance of the woman's meal that made Elisha decide I gotta pull into this kitchen and sit at her table I gotta have some time to be able to feast from what she's offering me are you worshiping with a clean heart? Are you singing melodies of praise? Are you in unity with other believers? Is your heart full of righteous desires? Are you being obedient to the word? Are you seeking God? Put forth an effort to allure the spirit of God. Knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. Prepare for Jesus. He'll come and dine with you. Listen to this sentence. I should have put it on the screen, but I didn't. Put forth the energy to attract the spirit of God in your life. Put forth the energy to attract the spirit of God in your life. The scripture says that Elisha would have stopped by often and eat dinner. And then he'd leave and be on his way. And the Shunammite woman wanted to do more for the man of God. Her heart wanted to build him a room so he could come and rest from his journey. Now listen, the one, there's one thing to cook a meal for the prophet. There's another thing to build a bed and breakfast. She had a lot of foresight to minister to the prophet. But none of that could take place without the Shunammite man. The Shunammite man was the spiritual authority of the house. There was no way that any of this could take place without him. She may have had the desire, she may have had the vision, but without submitting to the authority of the house, the project was null and void. Let us realize that we may have foresight, we may have insight, but if our lives are not under spiritual authority, we will cripple the chances of ministry. Now y'all are quiet. Too often we ruin our chances at a miracle because we do not come under authority of the God that uh, of the of the authority that God places in our lives. Listen, your plan may be on point and your vision may be perfect and clear. You may have holy divine inspiration, but without submission to a spiritual authority, your dream will never come to fruition. You be sure you balance your anointing with submission. I ought to put that on the screen too. You be willing to balance your anointing with your submission. I'm going to chase one rabbit, Tony, because it's getting close to dinner. And somebody told me I got reservations up in Chattanooga. So I got to get out of here in time to make reservations at some fancy restaurant. I don't know what happens if you miss your kickoff time. But I got to say something because we have a lot of people seeking the anointing. And I want the anointing because it breaks yokes of bondage off our lives. I want the anointing of God to be able to shift and change and draw people. It is the anointing that works wonders. But when anointing gets out of balance from submission, you'll get ahead of the vision of the house. You'll begin to corrupt the things God is calling holy. Even though you got a good vision and a pinpoint plan. But when you're out of authority, out of submission, your plan begins to weeble wobble everything else that's in motion. In other words, you cause everything to get out of balance and God is not the author of confusion. So balance your anointing with submission. So the Shunammite woman, I told you Tony, it was a small rabbit on a small trail. The Shunammite woman approaches her husband. Hey honey, can we build this prophet a room? She makes a clear vision. She writes it down lays out the plan on the kitchen table, presents it to her husband for his approval. Because not only did she need his approval, she needed his assistance and his money. Every man in the house should have said, yes! God may give you a vision, but for it to come to pass, you will need help. God wants us to build a room, but you need a Shunammite man to come into partnership with you to make a dream a reality. 
You can no longer do the one man show. You must willingly come into partnership for the kingdom. In the time we are living in, God is breaking down barriers of denominations. He's breaking down barriers of race relations. He's breaking down northern to southern barriers, eastern to western barriers, because he's got plans and visions he needs to accomplish. And it is so much and too much for us to do it ourselves. We've got to come in partnerships and pull our resources, our energies, and our knowledge, and our wisdom to be able to complete the task at hand. Let us build a room. Let us make a place for the presence of God to dwell. The Shunammite man built the room. His wife had the vision and he had the resources. And together they reaped the benefits of their labor. You see, the Shunammite man may have been a minor figure. Maybe he had the muscles and the hammer to complete the vision. But he's only a minor player in the process. But without him, There is no room. Now the man of God comes to eat. But he tarries in the house. There's so much I could preach on this. And the longer the presence of God is in the house, the more the things begin to change. If some of y'all would start getting just a little more hungry for a meal and begin to decide, i got to build a room for the presence. The more the presence of God tarries in your house, the the more the atmosphere begins to shift and the, the more the Spirit of God begins to hover, the more things begin to change and before long the, the atmosphere begins to shift and the prophet is no longer eating, no longer satisfied with eating. The prophet is no longer happy sleeping on the bed. Now he wants to bless the family. <laughs> it's important to note that this room was not built with alternative motives. The man and the woman did not build this room to manipulate the prophet so that he would give them a word. They did not feed him and provide for him that he would favor them. They have no other reason of building a room except to minister to the Spirit of God. Unfortunately, we have lots of room being built today with motives that are impure and unholy. People are trying to manipulate the Spirit of God by serving Him with hearts that are out to control Him. We'll manipulate the minister. We'll manipulate the prophet. We'll try to manipulate the Spirit. We'll try to say the right things, cook the right meal, and build a room. But when your heart is stinking, everything else around you eventually will stink. Oh, I forgot I got some visitors on the back. Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm sorry, y'all. Because you can mask that smell for a little bit. But before long, no matter how much smell good you put on that, that odor of impure motives begin to come and begins to choke out the very spirit that you're longing to be with because your heart has a different idea because you're trying to manipulate a God instead of submitting to him. But not the Shunammite man. Not the Shunammite woman, they just wanted to honor the prophet of God. And as a, as a result, God honored them. Elisha says, what you want, woman? What do you need? I'm, hey, hey, prophet, I'm good. I got everything I need. I don't need to, I, I'm living in my home, got everything I want. Every, I don't need anything. Gehazi spoke up, they don't have a son. I guess the old Shunammite man had given up on being a father to a boy that, that, that would keep his legacy alive. I guess they had just learned to do life without expecting their name to carry on. But God had another plan. The Spirit of God, watch this, stay with me now. The Spirit of God has saturated the atmosphere of the house. And he began to cause dead wombs to come back to life. The Spirit had hovered over the atmosphere and began to call things out of darkness. The Shunammite man needed to be honored. The Shunammite man needed his legacy to continue. The Shunammite servant's heart needed to extend on to another generation. When you put our when we put ourselves second and God first, God will give you what you have not been able to give yourself. Read that and let it set in. 
When you will honor the presence of God, when you will serve God with a faithful heart, he'll give you what you've not been able to give yourself. The Shunammite man has been able to give his wife a son, but God saw an unspoken need and brought life to a dead area of their lives. I wonder how many people in this room have a dead area, unspoken, not known to anybody, but uh, somebody that travels with the man of God said they ain't got no son around here. Elisha, I've been through this house so many times. We've eaten in this room so many times we've slept under this roof so many times but I've not one time seen a son and all of a sudden somebody else brought the need to the prophet and the spirit of God began to activate what was once dead I guess what I want to tell you God will make a way all of a sudden God will show up and because you've allowed the spirit of God to hover over your waters God will bring to life the dead things of your life When we finally get to a place where serving God is more important. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. I got to hurry. I don't want to be late. We finally got to get to a place where serving God is the most important thing. And it's done without wrong motives then God will give you what you'll never been able to produce. God will reward your faithfulness by opening up the doors of heaven and pouring out a blessing that you cannot contain. God wants to give you the son that you've never been able to produce yourself. It may be too late on your timetable, but it's in the perfect timing for God to show up and produce a miracle in your life that will cause God to get glory from every step you take. God loves to show up and bless you with the impossible. He loves to revive an old dream that died years ago. God loves to speak life into an area that you have given up on long time ago. Oh, whatever you need, it's not too late for God to come through and to bless you with the impossible. But you must put him first. You must serve him. You must honor him. You must reverence him. Not because of what he can give, but because of who he is. So the prophet spoke a word, and the Shunammite man and woman fell in love all over again, had a second honeymoon, and produced a baby to keep it PG. The Shunammite had a vision. She had a heart. She had a desire. But the husband came into partnership and supported the vision, honored the prophet, and received the reward too. He was a minor player, but he rocked the baby. The man and the woman were blessed with a child. They both had the honor of being called mama and daddy. Tony Stewart in his book, The Door to More, listen to what he wrote. You may be highly gifted and called by God to do great things, but unless you're in partnership with the right people, you will not accomplish your calling. You will not be who God has called you to be. You need to humble yourselves before God and others. You need to pray and look for divine connections. As God brings them, turn to them and say, I need you in my life. Your gifts complement me and will help me build for the next season of my life. My gifts will help you. Let's be partners. We need each other. We need a Shunammite man to come into partnership with. We need a Shunammite man. And listen, women, you can be a Shunammite man. Don't get offended. You can be somebody partners who partners to produce the vision. Sister Nikki, we need people who may only be minor players. But without them, the room never gets built. Without them, the second honeymoon never happens. Without them, the baby is never conceived. Without them, birth never takes place. Everyone in this room is important. Every one of you. Whether you're a teenager, whether you're a little rug rat, everybody in this room is important. Whether you're a a hundred years old, everyone in the room is important. And we need each other. Some people will have the vision and some people will have the hammer. Don't get mad if you got a hammer. If you got a hammer, partner with somebody that's got a vision. I don't know why God ain't giving me what I Because you got a hammer. It's your job to partner with somebody that's got the foresight. If you got a hammer, let somebody bring you a blueprint. Because without you, the vision can't come to pass. 
In Stanley and Jennifer's relationship, she's got lots of blueprints. And his hammer is wore out. Because she keeps on telling him to build something else. But he's wanting another honeymoon. So he keeps building. We are all part of the process. We all need each other. You need to understand, Rising Fawn, everyone in this room, the vision will not be completed without you. God has placed you here for such a time as this. We need Shunammite men to be willing to accept a Shunammite woman's vision. I can't sit, accept no woman's vision. She's an inferior species to me. How dare I take her vision and build it because her vision is trying to build to handle the presence of God. I wonder how many visions we've overlooked because we, it came from people we thought were inferior. Y'all better stand because I'm now in that Wednesday night teach mode. How many of us overlooked a vision because we didn't think the person was worthy enough to give it to us? So we didn't partner with a Shunammite woman to be able to house the presence of God. God's not finished. It may be bleak now. It may be desperate now. <laughs> but the presence of God is coming by. Can we allure him into the building? Can we allure him to sit at the table in the presence of my enemies? Can we build him a, him a room so that he can just stay a little longer. Ah, oh, i got to stop. God is going to bless his children who will prepare a room, prepare a place. He'll come in. He'll sup with him. Don't give up. Get involved. I'm going to say that again. Don't give up. Get involved. Will you say that with me? Don't give up. Get involved. I want us to build a place God will inhabit. Because when he comes, we become fertile. When he comes, we begin to produce babies all over again spiritually. When he comes, dead things come to life. When he comes, the atmosphere shifts. And one day, if you'll build the presence of God a house, one day you'll take a dead baby that's now a teenage boy, and lay it down for life to come back. That's how the story continues. All the son and his daddy are out in the fields. He gets a, a migraine, has basically an aneurysm, falls dead. But because they had prepared a room for the spirit, they took their dead boy, laid him on the bed that housed the presence, and death could not hold him. Because of the power of resurrection, that Shunammite woman told the Shunammite man, I got to go get the prophet. Everything is all right. I'm, I'll be right back. Everything is all right. You know why? Because the baby now laid where resurrection laid. Ah, some of you may be in a holding something that died prematurely in your hands, but you prepared a room. Don't forget the room you built to count the blessings of God. Don't forget the room you built to house the presence. Maybe you need to come this morning to the altar and lay what's dead on the presence of God and say, God, it's going to be all right. I wonder how many dreams have died in your life. And the very first connection you got to make is with Jesus. If you're not in the right place with the Lord, if you don't know him as your Savior, why don't you come lay in, lay your, your dead self on the presence so that the resurrected self can get up. Father, I've preached the words you've commanded me to preach. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you for your victory. I thank you for your goodness. And God, I did it in the right time frame. But now, God,